Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. I don't know what this is, uh, sixth one maybe, of JC3D. Now what I'm going to do today is make a cucumber for you. I've been getting pretty excited about these videos because I've been doing a little jam on the guitar and singing or playing drums, bass guitar, and then doing something funny with these 3D models on TikTok. So you can look out for that later today with this cucumber. But for now, I'm going to 3D model this in Cinema 4D R25. Let's see. Pretty soon I'm going to have my first guest on the show. I'm going to interview Tomas Marinello in Austria. Tomas is a guy that I work with in Burbank, California for Neil Adams. And um, he has kind of a different skill set where I'm more heavy on 3D modeling. He's more heavy on VFX, you know, using like a gun to blow a window out if a truck's going underneath the ground. He can do all that kind of cool stuff. Um, yeah, so it'll be fun to see what he's up to. I think he's going to work on a Mel Gibson movie pretty soon. So here is the cucumber. I was listening to NPR this morning. That's where I get all my lyric ideas. Um, something about a story. They were talking about healthy food. So my last model was a piece of pizza. So now I'm going to make a piece of cucumber for you. A cucumber slice. Um, I'm looking at this. And to make this object right here, I could go about it a couple of ways. I think what I'm going to do is, see, if I were to trace this whole contour with a spline, <clears throat> I'll get the shape pretty good. But um, it might not be subdivided enough. And then I want to go in here and kind of subtract some of this area right here and add these little seeds and just give it a little bit of 3D. And for that, I'm, I'm going to need to use the volume tool. So what I think I'll do is I'll start out with a heavily subdivided object because the volume tool likes when the objects are subdivided. So let's see. We'll just scale this cylinder up about as big as this cucumber, somewhere in there. And I want to check the, the height of the thing here and just make it kind of cucumber size-ish. All right. We'll go back in here. No. I can add subdivision later, which might help. Um, that way I don't have to move so many points. So I'll just go ahead and current state this to an object. It's got four height segments. I'm going to lower that down to zero. We're going around 16. That looks pretty good. Usually I change that to 12. I don't know why. Let's see. Current state to objects. This little make edible button right here. Click that. And then I can switch over to point mode. And I can move these points just to sort of line up with the guide a little bit better. That kind of irregular shape right there. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Just grabbing vertices here, having fun. There we go. Whoops. Missed my hotkey one there. Okay. Just going around the horn. Matching all these vertices. Do, do, do. Okay. Now, nah, let's see. I hyper nerve this or subdivision surface. I've been doing Cinema 4D for about 10 years, so they used to call that a hyper nerve. And then if I switch over to guru shading, guru chain shading, however you say that, and kind of see what I got going on here. Now, there's a way to subdivide this. So you get the subdivisions that are basically like in this guy right here, and those will stay with it. So if I just select everything and current state that to an object, See, I get all those subdivisions. Now, it might be a problem in here when I think about it. Um, yeah, maybe I don't want to exactly do that. Let me see. <laughs> I think what I'll do is just subdivide the cap a little bit. The top and the bottom. So, let's see. Let me go into my loop line cutter. Just going to add. Oh, where, where the heck is it? Am I in point mode here? Mesh, do, do, do. cut, loop path cut underneath that mesh tab up there. Boom, and let's add a quick cut right here, and a quick cut down here. That way when I turn on the hypernerms, it's gonna have a little bit more of an edge right there. And then let's just add a couple going in here. Do, 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 do. Looks pretty good. This side here, well, what the heck. Okay, now if I throw that underneath the volume tool, do, do, do. There we go. These are the voxels right there. So if you turn that down a little, I usually just divide by two. See how it looks. Looks a little bit funky still. Divide by two again. Getting pretty close. You see this little, I don't know what you want to call that, polygoniness there? So that's because this whole guy's not subdivided 
to an extreme level though. The volume builder really likes a lot of subdivisions. So I can start to smooth it out a little bit like that. But I'm also gonna be sort of remeshing this when I'm done because nobody really wants to have such a super high mesh unless you're in cinema. Um, then you can deal with it. But all the other programs, Studio Studio Max, Maya, Blender, if any one of those people want to import this model, um, I need to consider them and kind of try to lower the subdivisions a little bit. So now I'm just going to go in here and move these around. Boop -a -doo. Now I've got a couple more points in there so I can... Keep that edge nice and tight. Why is this not going back and forth? Okay. If you kind of get in a roll where you <coughs> hit the space bar, pops back to your selector tool. But since I have this line cutter tool engaged, it doesn't want to do it. So if I click over here, that's going to disengage that line cutter tool. It should behave more like I'm expecting it to, where I can just sort of make these oops that's what's happening there we go so now it'll toggle back and forth hit the space bar toggle to the selector space bar again toggle to the move tool just back and forth like that to make these moves all right looks pretty good now i'm gonna hide that and save the scene let's say uh, do, 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 do. In a whole new year now. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to do is just quickly make these seeds. For these here, I'm just going to trace the splines. I think that's the easiest way to go. I mean, you could squish down a sphere or something. But uh, let's just trace them. I'm just clicking in that empty space over there in the object manager and then it tells the computer that I want to make a new separate spline so you can see there's two splines up there. You could make them all actually the same one, it would probably work. But I might want to use these objects too to scale them up and make those little sinkholes behind them. Hold on. Come around the horn, clicking on the object manager again. Start a new spline. Go to the doctor. That's for my lovely partner, Dina, who's pregnant with our baby, Lily. Coming about a month or so. I'll be a dad again. Got one son named Jason, who's great. He's in the third grade. He's really into 3D modeling. He doesn't do it a lot, but he plays so many games that are full 3D from Fortnite to Roadblocks. And he's experimenting with that Oculus Quest. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing. So I'll get him in here and I'll have him do stuff kind of similar to this where you're just tracing around. Um, I've had him do like mountainscapes and different little things. Sometimes I've used his work in a professional project and then he'll see it. And that's pretty exciting for him just to see his work go into the, the main production. One around the horn here. Each one of these is a little different, you can see, so it kind of makes sense to do them all. You could go and paste one and just sort of duplicate it around, but this way you're going to kind of get a little bit of the originality in each little seed. But I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. I've got a pretty high tolerance for this kind of just work. So for me, I could be tracing a spline like this or I could be extruding polygons. It's really, to me, it's almost the same thing. It's just a very, uh, I don't know if I'd say meditative. It's definitely a kind of thing where you could be listening to a podcast, 
could be listening to music. You could be doing a YouTube live like I'm doing right now while I'm working. And this this kind of work is just sort of happening on automatic pilot, really. Where I'm just I got my eyeballs going, I got my finger clicking. But um, I don't know if there's too much thought being put into it. Okay. Do, 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 do. Before you know it, you'll have all of them traced. I mean, what's it been? Like three minutes or something like that? It's not. It doesn't really take forever once you kind of get into the flow. Looks like I'm missing two of them. <laughs> you say control Z like an undo if you put a dot somewhere you didn't mean to do it. Everything is pretty nonlinear too. I mean you could hit undo and you'd go all the way back to the beginning. It becomes a little nonlinear when you see me do things like current state to object. That's when things sort of become abstract point clouds to the computer. It knows what the mesh is and everything, but it doesn't think of it anymore as like a sphere or a a poly or a plutonic primitive. So I'm just going to go through these, make sure each is separate because I might have, yep, see, like I did one with two. But when that happens, you just select a bunch of points on the one you want to delete, like this, make a copy, hold down control drag, and then just delete these points, and then go back to that one and delete these points. Okay. Now we got two separate ones. Where's this one? I don't even know. That one appears to be a dud. Do, 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 do. Okay, there they are. Now what you can do, I like to put all these on beast spline. Makes a nice little interpretation that's just sort of round based on proximity of points to each other. So if you put two points, three points close, you get a pinch. If they're far, it just sort of curves them. I, I like these ones a lot. Okay, so let's see. So these are going to be the seeds. So I can take that and actually, even though there's a lot of them, you can put them underneath one extrude. You just have to click one button in there, uh, which is high, hierarchical, like that. Boom, and they all pop in. These look like they definitely want to have a couple of caps. So 0.01, maybe 0.1. So that just adds that little bevel around the edge. And then you've actually sort of got a size right here. So I'm going to change that to 0.2, maybe make it bigger, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1. Yeah, it looks nice. Okay, now the heights are off. So that's right here under the offset. We can bring that down to like one. Yeah, that's a pretty good guess right there. And then we can bring back in our little model here. I can lift these cucumbers up ever so slightly. Maybe like that or something. And then we want to sort of get that little indentation in there. So I'm going to do that next. Um, just select all, group it, hide it. I actually learned a pretty cool trick. Uh, let's see if I can remember it. It was that you could brush these. I forgot how he did it. He like, oh yeah, see that how I'm painting those? So I just saw this on the Maxon tips. And it's pretty cool. You can just select them and then paint down. And it'll do whatever you've done. Uh, one trick that I knew, always knew, is if you hold control, it does all the children in there. So like I'll show you that trick. If you hold control. Or, yeah, I'm sorry. Or, yeah, control. And you click these dots, it does that. So that's that's actually real help, helpful. And all the time, you're going to be using these little tools. The one below is if it's rendering, it's viewable. The one above is if it's in the editor, viewable. Okay, so here in the editor, I've turned it off, turning it back on, just to show you. Now in here, I'm just going to try to get this shape of these so it pushes down a little. Yeah, let's see. I could try to just freeform draw this. Uh, there's a way, if you just click sketch here, you can kind of freeform these like this. Boom. Oh, that was a pretty bad one right there. Let's try that again. I'm looking for the close one, but I found that one after. 
Let's see if this works. We'll just do this real quick. Um, oops. Okay. So anyway, I'm looking at all these points right now. I'm not really like satisfied with that approach there. So I'm going to go back to the one that I really like a lot, which is just to plot them out. And I think on this one, what the heck, I'm just going to keep them all connected. I guess it doesn't really matter for this particular move here. Just sort of tracing around that big little divot that they're in. Of like, whatever that flesh stuff is. Looks tasty though. <laughs> this looks like there's a one that didn't have a seed spot, which is kind of cool. And then when I'm done with this, I'll put a bevel on the bottom side. I can put it on the top too. And then it'll have these little scoops, these little sort of spoon shapes in there. Like that. <laughs> Boom. And then this is the last one right here. Okay. Boom. Now we go and we take this. Let's put it on to close blind. Beast blind. So they're all nice and smooth like that. And then what I'm going to do is extrude them. And I'm going to copy this one here because I like the the height and everything and the bevel. So I'll just sort of hijack all that. And I've got that right in there because uh, I used the same one. Now the magic comes in when you drop this object. I'm going to save the scene underneath the volume tool. Like show. And then have it subtract. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I need to lift it up just ever so slightly and put it in position. That looks about right. Okay, then you go down to the volume builder, drop it as a child. Now it merged, which is its default, but I want it to subtract. So you click on volume builder, and then you get a new object manager in the attribute window, which is fun. <laughs> like a simulation within a simulation. So in here, you'll have a couple of options like subtract and that'll empty that out. Now it looks a little harsh, but um, let's see, perhaps I can smooth this one of two ways. One way to do it is just to lift it up a little. Oops, I'm lifting up the whole thing. Lift up this guy like so. Something like that. And then maybe if I lift these up a little bit more. Like that. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. So now what I can do is grab that texture. <laughs> Cucumber slice. And then we'll drop it on the top null there. And then it comes in kind of funky. But if you put it on flat. And you go up to tags in the at in the object manager and say fit to region that allows you to kind of do like a, a box and wherever that box is and i'm using this guide underneath it because it's the same ratio it's the same size so if i just match this it comes very close to projecting the texture the way i want it and I can, i'll be able to adjust this later so we're just sort of throwing it on there and then to adjust it go into um, texture mode up here and then you can move it around, you can scale it up. So let's see, I think I will 
scale it up. Maybe just scale it a little wider. Like so. Maybe I'll move it down a little. That looks pretty decent to me. Now you're, o you're always going to get on these edges streaking like bullets because whatever the pixels are right here, once they get to the edge, they streak, which looks pretty bad. So you've got to go back in and do some kind of a set selection on this and then make that just a solid green. But even like this, if you're just showing it like that, people probably wouldn't really notice, you know, if that was just sitting there in a salad or something like that. Um, so let's see, but I'll, I'll try to go through the process of making this here green for you. So I'm gonna save it. Sometimes when I'm gonna do something big, bold, I save incremental. That just saves a new version in the hard drive. Then I got that old one to go back to if I run into some problems. So what I can do here is add this um, remesh tool. Take the remesh tool, drop this underneath it. And then I'm just gonna take a look at these lines here. Now I don't want a whole bunch of these lines. So I go way down. Usually I go down to like 5% first. See if it looks halfway good. This actually looks to me halfway good. You know, if I if I take these lines off, it will probably look almost identical. See that? Way less polygons. So the computer can just go much faster with the object. You can see here I could probably align this up a little bit better. Just saw that. Something like this, maybe. At this, at this point, I'm kind of like nitpicking. Okay. So let's now take this and do a current state to an object. Now that reduces it to this mesh. And with the mesh, I can go in and select points now that I couldn't do just a moment ago. Or if I go into this mode, select tool and say looper tool select loop selection like so and uh, see it makes it a little messy but it's okay um i can select this from uh, in a manual way from one of these windows like this where whatever i put my selector tool around it'll select just those points so i could go like this and then Take these off, maybe. Run into some weird issues here. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to go in and add those one and two speak. Do 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 do. Let's take a look at this thing. Don't want any of these in the middle selected. I got a little bit of an issue right there, but I'm not going to worry about it because I don't think anyone's going to see that. So, well, this is my, this might actually look a little bit odd because of such, uh, such a weird remesh to where it, it'll just sort of randomly, because it's trying to reduce the polygons. Um, you know, you could, you can fight that by going back and do it manually, but then you lose the power to sort of subtract these shapes and get that organic look. It's a balance and you kind of have to go object by object. Um, sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not worth it. So just to show you really quick though, I'll grab a material. Um, I'll tell a lot, a lot of the work that I'm doing is, you know, really having to happen really kind of rapidly. So I would probably take something like that and throw it right into what I was doing. I probably wouldn't go in and spend more time on it, but I'm just gonna do it because it's, what you would want it to look like if you had a close up. So let's see, make this material and I'm just gonna select this, the darker green over here, somewhere like that one. Then I get that nice green color. And then reflection, I could take that on or off. We'll see how it goes. I think 
I kind of like that. So then you go back down here. Now you have the set selection. You just drag and drop that on it like that. And it does look pretty bad. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So it, it's, it is looking pretty wicked right here, these little guys like that. So I would have to go back and do it a little bit better. So let's see if I can do it. Let's go back in here. Does that let me undo it? Oh, yeah, I'm doing a bunch of set selection. Okay, so now I'm back to the volume mesh. Now, this volume mesh actually has a nice, really nice edge here in cinema before I had had to reduce it like that. So let me think here. Do, 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 do. That's one of the problems with these volume builders is you can't really do textures in them too well, but the but it is really awesome. As long as like the object doesn't need a lot of texture like this one happens to. Um... So let's see. Do, 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 do. What would I do? So I think what maybe I would do is just remesh it on a higher level. So say that I'm on 50 here. Let's just look at these and then try to avoid this problem where it gets a more perfect circle around it. So what if I go up to 30%? So it's reworking right now. The computer's thinking about it and it pops back on. So I'm still getting this kind of horrible computer generated edge right here. So I think that in this particular instance, it's not really going to work too well for me to try to get a good set selection in this model. So I might just leave it like this for now. And then if I wanted to have a more perfect edge on that, I'd have to put some more time in to um, kind of avoid using the volume tool to get this little cool shape in the middle that I got, that little divot there. Because you'll see when I take this into the next app and we render it, It'll be the next scene. Let me just do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'll take this into the next scene. Let's see, save. Let me copy it. Track down my latest scene that I've done that has the lighting that I like uh, for Turbo Squid. This pizza slice. Do, 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 do. Let's see if this is it. Okay, that's it. Boom. Now I'm going to go in here and just grab this, copy, paste it into the scene. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Mm. Scaling these things does kind of screw with the volume tool, so you kind of have to be careful. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. Let's see here. And I'll just click render real quick. Oh um, uh, Let's see. And look at that. Beautiful cucumber. We do have some streaks on the sides that we would have to contend with if it was going to be seen a little bit more close up but this should work perfectly for at least half of the shots you want to throw it into so there you are a nice healthy cucumber slice take a look out later on for this on tiktok i'll do some creative fun little music video thing and uh, let me know what you think if you post some stuff in the comments like if you have an idea for a model that you want me to 3d model how would i approach it um i would love to give it a shot just let me know if you can subscribe that would help me grow the channel um, basically for me this is a glorified portfolio so this is just a way for when I'm not actively working for somebody uh, my rate 6750 per hour and if I'm not if I don't have a job booked or anything like that then I'm doing this basically to have a, kind of a futuristic portfolio where people can see me work I'm try trying to become you know quote unquote teacher authority figure where if somebody's coming up and they have some questions you know i can help you that'll make me look good for my high dollar clients because i just exude confidence in 3d modeling and most of the work i do um will come out as sort of a still image um, it's not so much animation i do do that for clients um, they'll have me do 3d modeling there's a company in town of the town I live in that does wastewater treatment. They've got some pretty complicated systems. You know, they're they're doing some animations right now. You know, so 
yeah, any, any ideas you have. I do a lot of different things. Uh, just hit me up in the comments or you can email me and uh, let me know. I'd love to do something that, you know, a viewer suggests. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll see you again soon.